no extraordinary business and no notices of motion. So on to item nine, which is just the reports. Move nine. Pending. Moved. Councillor Darby. Seconded. Me. Um, <coughs> I'll put that. Oh, well, is this nine? Yep, this is nine. Well, Ma Ward. Madam Chair, I, I'm just a bit confused here. In relation to nine, attachment B, mm -hmm. uh, 1.4, proposed Auckland Unitary Plan, yep. and it's really a follow on from what Penny was just talking to us about. And it says in the last column, expected reporting, item on this agenda, and I can't really find the item. Is it is it coming to us or is it not on the agenda or just an item on agenda outlines proposed approach to adoption of the unitary plan in two thousand sixteen. So is that I, I think that it might come just be a bit of a oh John. Thanks Madam Chair. Um, <coughs> we've already presented that report to committee um, just prior to Christmas that approach to the adoption of the plan so that was um, an approach discussed at the, de uh, sorry, the uh, December meeting um, so that report was brought forward. Okay so that, that you, you were talking about how many days we had to make decisions and where they can only be on specific points. Um, was that in that report? That, that, was, that, that was the report and it also outlined some key priority topics um, and recommend that those as the focus for the committee in July and August when the recommendations come back from the panel. Okay, so we have 20, oh that was the one with 20 days but it can be extended to 40 days. That's correct. Okay, yeah. okay. I just thought there may have been some update on that but okay, that's the, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks John. Right, so that's been moved and seconded. I'll put that. All those in favour please say aye. aye. Against. Carried. Um, item 10 is just the can change 13, 14, been moved, seconded. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carried. Thank you, team. And. Sorry, right. Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to item 11, which is the City Centre Master Plan Target Review. Welcome, team. It should be straightforward as well. Oliver, in your last. Role, I think, as part of this before That's you move right, on yeah. to your new one. Ludo. And Ludo? Yeah, I think we'll just use that one. Yeah. <clears throat> the other one's just playing up. So, welcome. So, look, it would just be good to get the context of this and then we'll move on to the report. So, uh, kia ora, uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, good morning, uh, councillors, uh, Deputy Mayor, and uh, independent Murray Statue Board members. Um, this is my first um, session of the new year, so um, of the new ADC, so it's good to be back. And um, my team and I are looking forward to serving you all this year and doing our best uh, for you. Um, today we have two items coming forward to the team and to the councillors. Uh, the first is, a, is an update on the City Centre Master Plan targets, uh, which Oliver is going to take you all through and take any questions that are required. The second one is a, a, a big piece around the air tier uh, quarter framework, so um, Tim will be joining me for that conversation. Um, I just wanted to say that obviously this is Oliver's last hurrah really with the, the city centre team, and I just want to say on behalf of the, the, the wider team, you know, you've been amazing and been a great support, and Oliver's team have been incredible over the last two years with, as part of CCI, so you know, on behalf of us, I think the councillors need to know that, the, that this team have been doing, doing a great job, and this is a really a reflection of the, the targets and measures which have been produced by, by the team. So thank you to you. Um, before I just uh, pass over to, to Oliver, I just want to, there's, it's interesting when you have this conversation around progress um, and everybody will make their own reflections on the progress that they see in their own city. And uh, the city centre, as you all know, is undergoing massive change. And um, we use an odd word around swagger. There's a level of opportunity, a bit of sophistication, a bit of excitement around the place. And people are feeling really confident about, about their city. And we've used the word falling in love with the city centre. Well, there was a sense of falling out of love many years ago, and it's kind of coming back. So those aren't very technical words, but they are emotional words which we have to connect with our place. And I was thinking back to, to 2006, and the, the city that I saw when I arrived was, was re relatively dreary, would be my view. Um, lacking in luster, lacking in vibrancy. There was no waterfront, you know, there was no art gallery, there was no shared spaces. Many things have happened. 
but it didn't start in 2006. And it, you know, if you think back to the opening of Brother Mart, um, moments in our history which have transformed our city and the 700% increase in, in rail patronage since that time, um, the viaduct uh, being built. These are key moments and I was also reflecting back on the discussions that we had with the likes of Christine Fletcher and back in the city centre master plan preparation, you know, talking <coughs> about farmers and the department store and having the playground on the roof and a bird called Hector, um, who people, children, used to come into the city to visit. So those things, there's some good and bad that's, that's come and gone. But um, as I said, the journey is, is, is many, many years, 20, 30 years. But what Oliver and the team have done is aligned the city centre master plan vision with some clear measurable targets because we need to show progress against those targets but also make ourselves accountable for achieving them or not. So um, over to you, Oliver. Thank you. Thank you for the, the, the kind words, um, Luda. Uh, Madam Chair, I think I can say on behalf of all of us who've worked on the uh, City Centre program as part of the um, CCI team uh, recently and those, uh, those ongoing, it's, been, it's a real priv privilege to, uh, to work on, on the set of programs and, and to do, play some, uh, some part in, uh, in helping to deliver the City Centre Master Plan. So the, um, uh, the Master Plan is a, is a holistic document. It, it brings together a, a many different strands of work that are individually uh, doing great things, uh, but together will obviously uh, contribute to a, to a much greater whole. Uh, they contribute to a, um, a successful City Centre, and that means one that's economically uh, stronger, is more vibrant, and is better connected to the rest of Auckland. And what that means is that uh, Aucklanders as a whole are in a better position to be able to benefit from, from that growth through jobs, through uh, homes, through opportunities, uh, through retail experience, through even the odd great night out. So, uh, and that's something that we're, that we're really seeing. And obviously, as, as Ludo has mentioned, this wasn't a journey that began with the City Centre Master Plan, but what that did was really bring together how these programs can, uh, uh, can work and interact and, and strengthen each other. Uh, the, uh, obviously, with, with so many different programs, there are many partners who are delivering uh, this program. And what we've uh, tried to do through these, um, this review of the City Centre uh, Master Plan targets is to assess how that's all going. And we're really seeing the results of, the, of that program of work. Um, the paper before you uh, highlights the uh, extent of progress uh, there is on those measures where we already have some, uh, uh, some numbers. Now, the, um, the measures themselves are a mix. Uh, some of them are uh, measure direct activity by the council of one of its partners. So that's, for example, things like, um, are we actually cleaning the graffiti? Are we actually um, uh, engaging uh, with uh, youth in, uh, in developing programs? Uh, are we addressing high-risk streets in, our, in the programs of work, uh, in particular that AT are driving? Um, Others, other of the measures are around the outcomes of work. So um, you see that, for example, in things like uh, the shift in transport use. Those aren't <coughs> things that we're directly driving, but uh, we're certainly having a, a, a massive influence on through the, through the work. Uh, and other measures are basically a temperature test. How, th how are things going? Uh, things like, um, uh, is this a city center that's actually creating jobs? Uh, is it somewhere where people are actually uh, coming and visiting? Uh, those are things where uh, those are real indicators of, of, of the health of, uh, of the city. And together, all those different measures and the, and, and the, the different um, purposes that they, uh, they provide, they, they paint a picture. Now, as I mentioned, some of them are things that we already have numbers for. Uh, and in developing the targets, this has not been a straightforward process, I have to emphasize. Uh, we've gone through um, a number of uh, dead ends uh, in terms of uh, trying to uh, find things we would like to measure, but they're not, simply not available at the city centre level. Other things are things that we know that we, uh, uh, we want to ascertain, and um, uh, we are yet to agree how we'll actually assess them, but we know what the, that target needs to be. Um, I want to acknowledge, uh, if I may, the input and leadership of Kate Healy uh, of Ngāti Whātua as chair of the uh, Auckland City Centre Advisory Board of uh, uh, Waitematai Local Board Chair, Shell Chambers, and his board. Um, who've had extensive input, and, and many others, such as Viv Beck, of, uh, Chief Executive of Half of the City. And uh, hopefully you'll recall an earlier draft that was brought forward to, this, um, uh, to the Auckland Development Committee uh, workshop uh, back in September. 
where there was uh, where there was uh, some very valuable input. Um, there are no budget implications from this uh, this work. This is simply measuring the program of activity that's that's already underway. Um, also, I'm, I'm sure you'd like me to mention that the city centre is going through a period of significant change. It's already it's always going through a period of significant change, um, but I think we can say the years ahead uh, uh, that um, uh, that change will be extensive. We're already seeing that with the uh, International Convention Centre work um, already underway, kicking off last December, and I know some of you. Uh, can see that work underway from your windows. It's quite impressive um, what's going on there with the, the demolition of the buildings and, and, and that's starting underway. There's another $10 billion worth of uh, private investment happening across the city. $2 billion of that is uh, down Albert Street alone. Uh, and that's really been catalyzed by the extent of uh, infrastructure work. So alongside that very significant private investment, there are um, public infrastructure works as well. And together that is going to um, really see the uh, city centre go through you know, an even more exciting period of change than, than it has been in recent years. That will influence some of, the, um, some of the numbers, and we see that in the targets. So for some of those targets, we are looking simply to see a continuation of the scale of achievement or the scale of growth that we see now. And we would hope that uh, following uh, 2020, 2021, we might start to see some of those accelerate. And that's reflected in the targets themselves. Uh, just a, a couple of points on, on uh, the targets. We've gone from 36 that were in the original city centre mass plan down to 17 headline targets plus a, a further seven supporting. We could have dozens more. That's not really the point of this exercise. We need something that, that can give a, um, a fairly uh, a, a strong and, and succinct picture. But obviously behind each of these and alongside each of these measures, there are a whole bunch of other things which uh, when people wish to, they can, they can then uh, dive in. That said, some, this isn't complete. Uh, some of these measures will evolve, uh, in particular, um, our colleagues at ATED are uh, exploring some further measures, um, and that's outlined in the report, and we would hope that uh, these, those could be included in the future. Uh, I, I wasn't planning to go through the, uh, the measures uh, individually. Obviously, that would um, take some time, as uh, there are 24 in total, but uh, it is just worth highlighting, I think, uh, just the scale of progress that we've seen. The, um, a uh, number of homes uh, surging ahead of that, um, that target of, of uh, 1,000 a year. Uh, the number of jobs uh, growth, particularly last year, um, really very encouraging. Uh, the, um, there are a couple of measures that we've got so far where uh, we've put an amber rating. Uh, one of them is the um, air quality measures. Uh, the, uh, Figures on that are, are very encouraging. They have come down significantly, but it does show that there is further work to, um, uh, to bring those down within um, World Health Organization guidelines. The, just, uh, the nitrogen dioxide levels are holding just, just above. So as I said, the, the figures themselves, the figures do probably speak for themselves, but there may well be um, uh, questions that people have on, on specific targets. Madam Chair. Councillor Darby, I know you had an issue you were going to raise. Uh, yes, uh, thanks uh, Chair and thanks Oliver Ludo um, for the intro here. Um, and look, there have been some modifications to this since it's come from the City Centre Advisory Board. Uh, particularly, um, Madam Chair, I, I picked up with Oliver some of the measures um, uh, are not currently in place, but we've signalled when they're due to be in place. Um, and you can have targets, but unless you're measuring them all, they are absolutely pointless. So we've signalled in the grey there uh, when we expect that measuring to occur. Um, but generally, I'm I'm supportive of this, um, and but I do need to um, canvas. Um, I've had some uh, concern uh, um, expressed from Councillor Lee and on the uh, consideration of the Te Aranga design principles. Um, I have to say that. Um, I was actually instrumental in probably changing that and in some ways watering it down. And apologies to the IMSB, but I have dis discussed it with the IMSB this morning. The original words were meet 